بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم يسر لنا أمرنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين Talking about the Quran and Sunnah, my respect to the brothers and sisters in Islam, it is talking about the manhaj in the shir'ah of this beautiful deen. You're talking about the two main sources that we live by and adhere to. Adhering to the Quran and Sunnah, it's a great claim, a great call, great words, because the success in the hereafter, the success in this dunya is based on the Quran and Sunnah. There is no good and there is no benefit and there is no maslaha, there is no hasana except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about. And there is no evil and there is no mafsada corruption except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us from. So all the good is in the Qur'an and Sunnah. And all the benefit is in the Qur'an and Sunnah. And I want to highlight an important point for us to understand, because many of the brothers, they say we follow the Qur'an and Sunnah, my brother, only. This claim has to be understood properly. When I say I follow the Quran and Sunnah, ma the Ahbash, they say we follow the Quran and Sunnah. The Shia say we follow the Quran and Sunnah. So, who is correct? We all wonder, yes. Uh, they, say, they say, Al-Imam al-Shafi'i said, and we say Al-Imam al-Shafi'i said. They say Al-Imam Abu Hanifa says, and we say Al-Imam Abu Hanifa says. They say, Al-Imam Ahmad say, and we said, Al-Imam Ahmad says, who's right and who's wrong? A person who does not know much, he would stand and say, you know what? True. Everyone says, I follow the Quran and Sunnah. Tayyip. Right? Everyone says, I follow the Quran and Sunnah. So who, who is right in this mess? <sighs> I want to ask a question. The Australian Constitution, the Australian law, the American Constitution, the Lebanese Constitution, the Greek Constitution, any Constitution that is written. You decide tomorrow, you know what? I want to learn law in Australia. I'm going to the library and say, give me the Constitution. I want to read it. Would you understand it? No. You know why? Because your knowledge is limited. You would not know how to interpret the constitution you need the people who wrote the constitution to explain the constitution for you to illustrate the constitution for you and that is normal and that is something all of humanity have agreed on this formula so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran and then he sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the sunnah ala utitu al-Qur'an wa mithlahu ma'ahu I've been given the Qur'an and similar to it with it which is the sunnah. So the sunnah explains the Qur'an. The sunnah explains the Qur'an. And that's why, and I'll bring your attention to this and let's make it a little bit political. Most of the people who want to attack Islam, they attack the sunnah, they don't attack the Qur'an. Why? Except the jahil, that johal, that want to burn the Qur'an because he just ghabi. Tayyib. But the reality is, what explains the Qur'an for you is the word of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyib, but I still misunderstand the sunnah. Then, according to the understanding of the salaf, meaning the Qur'an and sunnah, which is our constitution, which is our belief, it has to be understood according to how the companions understood it. 
these are the people who witnessed the revelation the most knowledgeable in Arabic the most knowledgeable in Arabic and they were taught by the hands of the Prophet the companions come to you and explain the Quran and the Sunnah to you and that's why you are able to understand it and that's why when we say the generation of the Salaf so we follow the Quran and the Sunnah according to the understanding of our predecessors, which is the other three best generation. Khairul Quruni Qarni, the best of the generation is my generation. Then the one follows, then the one follows. This hukba, this group of people collectively, they give an infallible understanding to the Quran and Sunnah. And that is what it means following the Quran and Sunnah. To say I follow the Quran and Sunnah and just stop, in a way, it's not 100% correct. You have to add and combine with it according to the understanding of the Salaf. And that's why you see the misguided sects, they attack the Sahaba. Why? Because with attacking the Sahaba, they can have their own interpretation of the Quran and Sunnah. You see, and that's why anyone who wants to bring in an innovation to Islam, what does he do? Like one of them said, about Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu. And you all know Anas radiyallahu anhu wa ardah, this noble companion who narrated so much of the Sunnah to us. He said about him, He's a young boy when he heard the hadith. The hadith, we all know the hadith. Shuf how Allah test the ummah. Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma aflaha qawmun wallahu amrahum umra'ah. A group of people will not be successful if they put a woman as one of their leaders. A lot of the modernists said, Ya akhi, what are we going to do with this? This hadith destroys us. We want to give da'wah. Yani, but we have Margaret Thatcher and we have this and that. He said to them, no, 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 no. Who narrated of the hadith? He said, Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik was a young boy. Who knows whether he understood right or wrong. See, bab, the door of attacking the deen is attacking the Sahaba. And one of our greatest ulama said, the door of the Sahaba was Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. The door of the Sahaba was Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Because Ahl al-Bida' they speak badly about Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Once you demolish one companion, then the door is open. It's like once you fall into a major sin, the rest of the sins, they just come through easily. Once you attack Muawiyah, then you enter into Abu Huraira, then you enter into this, and you become attacking Abu Bakr and Umar. Then what is the deen? Becomes teen. The difference between the two? Deen and teen. Teen is figs. You know how it's mushy mushy the teen? Then the deen becomes mushy mushy. Why? Because there is no fence. No fence. The fence of the deen is the understanding of these three best generations who took from the Prophet وسلم, and with full honesty gave to their students. And then they understood it. And subhanallah, the ummah never seen a problem, major problem to say, even though there were some problems with the khawarij and others, they never seen a problem, the ummah, until those generations in Qaradu, when they become distinct, and then comes after that the bid'ah, when it really settled in the ummah, it's when we lost. That's why when we say, we want to go back to the Qur'an and the sunnah, we need to know how we speak about it. We need to go back to the understanding of those companions. What did Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu say about this verse? What did Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu say about this verse? What did Umar understand from this hadith? What did Uthman radiyallahu anhu understood from this? And then we can have a clear picture. And then when you say, I follow the Quran and Sunnah, then according to the way of the predecessors. That is a small introduction about what does it mean to follow the Quran and Sunnah. The second point I want to talk about is the obligation 
of following the Sharia of Allah, which is, what are the sources of it? The Quran and the Sunnah, according to the understanding of whom? A Salaf. And who are Salaf? The three blessed generation. Their understanding. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum. Follow whatever being revealed to you from your Lord. Walamru yaqtadil wujub. The order necessitates obligation. Allah said, Ittabi'u. Then follow what it's been revealed to you. Yani, do I have an option? No, you don't have an option. Top one would say, Wallahi, this is dictatorship. Do I have to yani, follow everything the Quran and the Sunnah says? Tab, how about I have to follow what I feel like? We say, simple. You come to a company and you say, I want to apply for a job. Ahlan wa sahlan. Tayyib. I'll give you the job description. I need you to come 8 o'clock and finish 3 o'clock and do A, B, C. And then I will pay you by the end of the week $1,200. Good deal? Yes. Monday to Friday? Monday to Friday. I allow you to go Juma and come back. Yeah, because you're a radical. Tayyib. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Tayyib. You come 8.30. You say, I come to work 8.30. Why did you come 8.30? What's got to do with you? I do whatever I like. Allah created me free. So I do what I like. Yeah, Habibi, but I'm paying you money. I'm paying you dollars so you can do the job. You chose and you want the Jannah. A deal. A covenant. Ahad. La ilaha illallah. For what? For the Jannah. Then, La ilaha illallah, implement on you. And one of the conditions of it is to follow and submit. You follow and submit everything Allah tells you, then you go to Jannah. You don't want the Jannah, it's up to you. Don't follow and submit. No one forcing you. But don't expect the Jannah if you're not going to meet the standard of the contract. What is the contract? La ilaha illallah. Is La ilaha illallah a contract? Of course it is. Shuf, pay attention. A lot of people misunderstand some things. You know, you walk to a petrol station, you put two dollars, you take one chewing gum and you walk out. In Islam, this is a contract. A valid contract. Bay'ul mu'atat. This is contract. Just me, two dollars. Yes, that's a contract. But I didn't say anything. It's a contract. Between you and him. Because there's a refund and everything dictated by the Sharia. Imagine buying chewing gum without saying a word is a contract and saying La ilaha illallah is not a contract. That's a contract between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will enter, Allah will give you Jannah if you obey Him and if you implement the Quran and the Sunnah. I want you to pay attention to a couple of examples supported by the Qur'an about disobeying the Qur'an and Sunnah. Watch Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Do not eat from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name not mentioned on it. Pay attention. The ayah, it is not talking about laham, this halal and not halal. The ayah is not directly talking about this. No. The kuffar of Quraysh, what did they say? And they want to criticize the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they want to mock the deen. So they established their own sharia. Look how the shaitan yuhi ila awliya'i. What they have done? They said to the Muslims. You guys are strange. al mayta the dead animal that died by natural causes, was not slaughtered. Allah has slaughtered that. Dubihat bisikinillah. It was slaughtered with the knife of Allah. And the halal, you slaughtered it with your own hand, and the hand of Allah is better than 
your hand so we eat the maita. Shuf. They made their own sharia. Their own understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, do not eat from that. Why? Because this is based of their tashri'ah, of their laws and their custom. And he said, وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقُ If you do so, it is a deviation and rebelling against the obedience of Allah. وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَا يُحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ And the shayateen, they reveal and they inspire their allies so they can argue with you. See this argument, where did that come from? Sometimes you'll be sitting talking to a kafir or to a Muslim, yani by name, his name is Muhammad, he was born Muslim and he doesn't practice anything. He comes up with arguments and ideas, it leaves you stunned. You say, where did he bring this from? Bawafi wahi from the Rahman. And there is wahi from the shaitan. The shaitan, he's been how long since Allah created the earth? And before that, he's so experienced for so long. He's professional. He knows where to bring you the matter that confuses the heck out of you. You'll be sitting confused. What's going on? Had a wahi revelation to him. He thinks he's smart. But the shaitan in the background revealing to him. To do what? So he can debate you and do al jidal keep debating you and bringing misconception and how silly is that misconception to say that this sheep was slaughtered by the hand of Allah the maita, the filth that died with the blood in it is better than the one that slaughtered by the hand of the Muslim Shaif, keep how the shaitan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the dalil in this ayah the dalil in this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ and if you obey them, indeed, you are a polytheist. Mushrik. Why? Because you have to submit to the will and the order of Allah. That's Tawheed al-Ta'a. To submit the, to the will of Allah and to obey Allah and to adhere to the Quran and Sunnah. Yani it went all the way to the issue of the sheep. And don't say, yani ya shaykh, if I eat laham uh, not halal, I'm a mushrik, no. That's not the point. The point is the obedience to eat from the al-mayta and to say, I believe this is halal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went to that level that if you turn away from adhering the sharia, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it, وَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ Another incident took place. The kuffar of Quraysh, my respect to the brothers and sisters in Islam, you know the ash'ur al-hurm. What are the Ashur al Hurum? Huh? Muharram, Rajab, Dhul Qi'dah, Dhul Hijjah. Yes, Hada Huwa. Four Ashur, four months, Hurum. The Arab used to glorify these four months. They never used to fight. Yasalunak Ani Shahri al Harami Qitalin Fih. And so on the ayat, they ask you about the, 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 the Ashur al Hurum, about fighting in it, and so on. And they never used to declare war. In those months but their whims it did not suit them it did not suit them to have them on this set date so they will delay the month and they will change the month according to their whims so they can raid this tribe and raid that tribe and fight here and fight there and not to restrict themselves to the Ashur al Hurum and so this is as a result of what making their own laws and their own sharia and their own way. The Muslim has to adhere and to the Quran and Sunnah and listen to what Allah revealed the ayah about this. He said, إِنَّمَا النَّسِيءُ Indeed the nasi' Which is the nasi' Delaying the months. زِيَادَةٌ فِي الْكُفْرِ It's an increase in kufr. يُضَلُّ بِهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا the one who disbelieve, they misguide themselves and misguide others with it. They make it halal one month and they make it haram another month. Shuf subhanallah. They play with the time. Allah called it what? Ziyada al kufr. Shuf, to that we say to that. So what we understand from this that 
the ruling of Allah and the Quran and the Sunnah, it has to be adhered to. They're there for you to follow so you can find success. And the ruling of Allah, it has to come to our heart with peace and acceptance. Because we all my respected brothers and sisters in Islam believe what? Believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-alim. We all believe that Allah what? Al-Hakim. We all believe that Allah al-Adl. We all believe that Allah does not oppress anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the all-knowing. He knows tomorrow, the past, today, and whatever did not happen, if it was going to happen, how it's going to happen? I'll explain that later. Tayyip. And he is the wise. And he is the just. And he does not oppress. So anything that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be good for us. No matter how much we find it strange. No matter how much you find it, at the first time you look at it, you say, yeah, does the Quran say that? But the reality, if Allah said it, then it is the correct. I tell you something. Look at Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. We all pass by this incident with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, but we don't reflect a little bit on it. Some of us, they, especially some of the modernists and, uh, and, and, and some of the misguided, they try to use their intellect over the Qur'an and Sunnah. The first one who submitted the Qur'an and Sunnah fully when the test came was Abu Bakr. And that's why you would see from this incident why Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu on a higher level than all the companions. Pay attention. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi rihlati al-isra'i wal mi'raj in the journey, in the journey, the Isra wal Mi'raj, you all know about that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was explaining to, to Quraysh and others the journey and what happened. Everyone thought, what's wrong with this? Yani, somebody travel overnight up in the heavens. Yani, you can imagine someone sitting in Mecca in the desert. He says to you, I got a horse and it took me to Jerusalem and I prayed Imam and I went up and I saw a uh, uh, Musa and at the same time I was praying Imam in Musa down on earth Yani a story if you do not have Iman your it twists your mind Even some of the companions thought about it Some of them when they heard about it they sort of took a moment to think about it To digest it and accept it Abu Bakr wasn't like that When it came to him the news With mockery came Come and hear your, uh, your companion He lost his mind he says that he traveled to Jerusalem overnight and he went up at the heavens. What did he do? Now, he said to him, first he tested the narration whether it's authentic or not. He said, is this narration authentic? Did he say that? He said, yes, he said it. He said, that's the truth. Then it happened. Shuf. He submitted to the text no matter what. He didn't even give it a second thought. He didn't say, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me think about it. No. Look at us. Look at our situation. The order comes, we twist it and chew it and twist it and chew it and twist it and chew it, and then we call ourselves Salafi. Yachi, call yourself Talafi, don't call yourself Salafi. If you adhere to the Quran and Sunnah, once the Hadith comes, you're allowed to question the authenticity of the narration. But you're not allowed to question the text itself when it comes to you. You say, okay, it's authentic, خلاص. in Bukhari, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا In Muslim, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا In Abu Dawood, an authentic, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا شوف, طبعاً طبعاً, this is, this is how you, if you want to really claim you follow the Quran and Sunnah. But, unfortunately, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا نحن mankind, we were created weak. We just want to question and analyze and put the deen in the laboratory of our brains to bring it up. And then we say, yes, we adhere or we don't adhere. Another important point about my lecture today, I don't know how much I have time. 
we need to understand something. My brothers, I bring a few different points in the lecture today because the attack on the Quran and the Sunnah is growing. And our brothers now are doubting the Sunnah, and especially I talk directly to the brothers who are involved a lot in academic study. It's becoming normal in the academic arena. Everything is up to questioning. And this word, ah, oh, it's only sunnah, has become something that unfortunately our ahbab, our close brothers are being following into that. Disregarding the value of the sunnah and separating between the Qur'an and the Sunnah. No. The Qur'an and the Sunnah, my respected brothers and sisters, are one entity. Actually, and Imam Ahmad says, As-Sunnatu qadiyatun ala al-kitab. Even though uh, Al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah, he didn't like that, that statement, he thought it's a bit hard. But the reality of the statement is correct. And Imam Ahmed, what did he say? He said, the Sunnah judges the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an in need of the Sunnah. And I assure you, many issues in the Qur'an without the Sunnah, if not the majority of issues, you will not understand it. You will confuse it. Starting from the Salat, through to the zakat, through to the siyam, the hajj, everything is in the sunnah. The issues of jihad, the issues of wala and bara, everything. The Quran gives you the golden rule. But the details come from where? From the sunnah. And as I said in the beginning of the lecture, as, as if you want to know a group of people, and a small sect of people, or a person, you see how much they value the sunnah in their teachings. You see how much they value the sunnah in their lecturing. Once you see a group of people start to deviate from the teachings of the sunnah, you know they are going on the bottom. This golden rule. How do I know this person is a person, a, a good teacher? Or not a good teacher, you see the value of the sunnah in his teachings. If the sunnah has no value in his teaching, or it is minimal, or someone, you tell him, Qala Rasulullah, he goes, yeah, yani, it's only the sunnah, ya akhi. Yani, sun, the sunnah is negotiable. As um, one brother converted to Islam, and this has happened back in Sydney, it's a funny story. Brother converted to Islam. And then he came to our lessons, and our ikhwa, mashallah, they sit down, هذا ضعيف, هذا صحيح, كذا. يعني, they speak about the sunnah. Alhamdulillah, our mashayikh are, as we know, they try to well inform himself in the sunnah as much as possible, because the ilm is the Quran and sunnah. So this person went to speak to some brother, we're not going to mention which sect. He said to him, listen, listen, listen. Anyone who says to you, this hadith is sahih, and this hadith is da'if, he's a Wahhabi, stay away from him. <laughs> Wallahi, this is true. Yani, this guy destroyed the deen. Alhamdulillah that Al-Imam Al-Bukhari falawa of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. I can't understand the jahl of this ummah. La, ya akhi. Asal asil, taking care of the sunnah, is asal asil in our deen. And the sunnah is part of the book. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ called it what? وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ I've been given the Qur'an and similar to it. Similar to it with it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam given you, take it. And whenever he forbid you from it, Stay away from it. Pay attention. Again. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ 
this is an absolute order from Allah that whatever the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bring, take. You get this a group of the modern hashashun. You know who's the modern hashashun? The Quraniyun. You know who's the Quran? What do they call them in English? Yeah, Mazin. Al Quraniyun. No, I don't know. Anyway, the Quranis. They say we take the Quran only and we don't need the Sunnah. And the Quran says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ A woman came to Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. Right? A woman came to Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. And he, she had problem with her hair. Her hair was falling a bit by bit. Like some sisters today, they try to dodge the fatwa when it comes in the sunnah. Falling bit by bit. And she want to wear a wig or a hair extension. So she came to my, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and she said, I read the Quran from a skin to a skin. MashaAllah. At least she tried. Some sisters reject the order of the Prophet sallam. She didn't even know how to read the Quran. And she probably doesn't know even how to read the Quran. From a skin to a skin, I could not find Allah wal I cannot find Allah cursed. Yani the one who um, wears extensions and the one who makes it for her. He said to her, You read the Quran from skin to skin? She said, Yes. He said, Didn't you read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? Whatever the messenger has given you, take it. And whatever he forbid you from it, um, uh, stay away from it. She said, Yes, I read that. He said, and the messenger came, لَعْنَ اللَّهُ الْوَاصِلَ وَالْمَوْصُلُ The messenger came with this. Shuf subhanallah. Clear order from, Muhammad, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another ayah in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ Absolute. And this is only for the messenger. By the way, we'll speak about this point later. Only the absolute obedience is only to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no absolute obedience except to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he say? وَمَنْ يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ Whoever obeys the Messenger, he has obeyed Allah. Whoever obeys the Messenger. But how do we obey the Messenger today? According to the Quraniyun, who say we don't need the Sunnah, خلاص. This is only talking to the Sahaba. Then 90% of the Quran talking to the Sahaba and we don't have a deen anymore. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, My obedience is from obeying Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today we obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, wallahi, it escapes you the name of this orientalist, Mustashriq. He said, let the Muslims be prideful as much as they can of their science of hadith. Because there is no ummah came on the face of this planet, kept its history, he meant here the sunnah, yani, like the ummah of Islam. The problem, ya ikhwa, wallah, I, st I, st I get uh, JYC, some of the brothers, who are actually because the opening of the internet and the misconception they say, yeah, Shaykh, how do we know that the Sunnah, the Bukhari, all that unfortunately, unfortunately al insanu adu ma yajhal the man, the human is an enemy of whatever he's ignorant of because if you were to open up the science of hadith and the brothers who studied in Kuliyat al-Hadith they will tell you they only in the four years they study in university, they take a couple of drops from the science of hadith. As the ulama, they say, the science of hadith, to be a master of it, you need three things. First, the wealth of Qarun, to buy all the books and read it. The lifetime of Nuh, because you need such a lifetime to be able to comprehend it. And the sabr of Ayyub, the patience of Ayyub, to be a scholar in hadith. Why? Because it's a, such a complex science that no one has the audacity to enter into it except someone who started when he was very, very, very young and he lived all his life inside his library and under the feet of ulama. Wallahi, we studied drops of it and I would say the hardest subject to be able to comprehend it. Why? It is to do what? To protect 
the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the sunnah when it comes to you, when Imam al-Bukhari says to you, this hadith is sahih, take it as you would take the prescription of the doctor and you will run, you don't even question it. You don't even question the prescription and you believe that this 100% good thing for you. And maybe the doctor on the side has got to deal with the pharmaceutical company and not all doctors, but yani, the Muslim doctors are good. But, yeah, you see, you take it and enthusiastic, you go to the pharmacy, yeah, give me. Al-Imam al-Bukhari is a doctor and he gave you this prescription, he says, Sahih. Or, al-A'imma of hadith. So, the sunnah is preserved for us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى Everyone will enter Jannah except who refuses. لا إله إلا الله The companions سقالوا وَمَنْ يَأْبَى And who would refuse? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى Whomever obeys me will enter Jannah and whomever disobeys me has rejected to enter Jannah. مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ عَصَى اللَّهِ Whomever obeys me, he has obeyed Allah. And whomever disobeyed me, he has disobeyed Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And whomever obeys Allah and his messenger, he will admit them to jannat under it. Rivers flow. So pay attention. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ و and the messenger. Both. Both are for you. And that's why the sunnah today, following it, is obeying the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ And obey Allah and obey the messenger. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Surah Muhammad, he said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ Oh, you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, وَلَا تُبْطِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ And do not nullify your deeds. By doing what? By turning away from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Because the amal يصبح باطلا The amal becomes باطل إن لم يتوافر فيه شرطان if there is two conditions not in it and you all know just a reminder first has to be sincere to Allah otherwise it is شرك والعياذ بالله if it is not to Allah or the second condition is to be according to the sunnah of the Prophet and that's why the amal will be batil if it wasn't for Allah and according to the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that would lead me to an important point. I don't know how long we have. Huh? Where is the organizers in this place? They put me in front of the camera and left. Here. You deal with it. Tayyip. How long do we have, Ya Habibi? Six, seven minutes. That'll be enough, inshallah. Taib. Important point here, ya ikhwa. Since we said about obeying the Prophet, obeying Allah, and obeying the Messenger, and the obedience of the Messenger is from obedience of Allah, then we have to understand something, which is to follow the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You adhere to the Quran and Sunnah? Yes. Really, this adhering to the Quran and Sunnah, it appears on you. When you emulate and follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Pay attention, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ Say, if you truly love Allah, who doesn't love Allah? The Christians love Allah. The Jews love Allah. Everyone loves Allah. Everyone says, I love Allah. But the real love, following who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everyone claims. Everyone 
claims that he loves Allah. But the true love is to adhere to the sunnah. You want to be successful. Mahabbatullah leads to the success and success is by adhering to the sunnah. Ya ikhwah, why don't we learn that the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only in adhering to it, not only by growing the bead and shortening the thawb and planting the maswak in the pocket. No, this is important sunnah. Important sunnah. But I want you to know that a sunnah also in al muhtaqad in the aqidah, our beloved predecessors, when they wrote books of aqidah, what did they call it? Did they call it aqidah? No, yeah. Aqidah mustalah muhdath. Aqidah is a new terminology. They called it a sunnah. They called, and that's why a sunnah li Abdullah ibn Ahmad. The, the sunnah, a book of aqidah. A sunnah li ibn Manda. A sunnah li khalal. The old books of aqidah. What were they called? Sharh usul al sunnah li lalakai. Imam Ahmad has got a book, usul al sunnah. Al Ajuri has got a book called al sharia. Why? Because the sunnah is to follow the belief of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions as opposing to the innovation. So the sunnah is in your i'tiqad, in your beliefs, in the, in the levels of tawheed and the divisions of tawheed, in everything. That is the sunnah. To adhere to it. Some of us, yakhtazil sunnah, he cuts off the sunnah to few acts. Some brothers, they say the sunnah to sit, eat on the floor, to eat with three fingers, and to eat mimma yalik, wat akul bi yaminik, wat urkhil lahyaw. All this is great sunnah. And there is no small sunnah and big sunnah. All sunnah is important sunnah. But also the sunnah is to be according to the sunnah of the Prophet in your aqidah, in your tawheed, in your wala, in your allegiance, in your enmity, in everything. Whom you love according to the sunnah, who whom you don't love according to the sunnah, who you will deal with, who you don't deal with. Everything has to be according to the sunnah. And nothing should get out of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pay attention to this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ Let the ones who turn away and disobey and not adhere to, to the order. And here the ulama said, the order of Allah and the order of the messenger. What would happen if we do not follow the order of Allah and the order of the Messenger? Yani the Quran and the Sunnah. What would happen? Listen. أَن تُصِيبَهُمْ Allah already said, He issued a warning for you and me. That if you turn your back on the orders of Allah and orders of the Messenger, a fitna going to strike you. And then we say, Wallah ya Shaykh, look at the situation of the Ummah. Of course look at the situation of the Ummah. Of course look at the situation of the Ummah. Look how far away the Ummah today from the Sunnah. An tusibahum fitna. Al fitan alayna tatra. Al fitan coming to us, we don't even know where it's coming from. You, you see the wise man, the smart man, the knowledgeable man, he does not know how to give fatwa anymore from the fitna. Aw yusibahum. Or a great torture and torment would strike them. Why? Because they turned away from and they rejected and turned away from the teachings of Allah and His Messenger. And also, the point that follows that to have us submit and surrender to the Quran and Sunnah. And pay attention to this ayah what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And I'm quoting the Quran a lot for anyone Why I'm quoting the Quran a lot? For an important point For someone to say Hey, you're using the sunnah to convince us to follow the sunnah We want you to use the Quran But that's why we're using the Quran So no one has an excuse And pay attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We did not send the messenger except so he can be obeyed by 
the permission and the will of Allah. So the messenger did not come abath for no reason. He came for you so you can obey him. When he says do, do. When he says don't, don't. And an ayah, and I keep repeating nearly in uh, every second or third lecture, and I explain it thoroughly, because this ayah, one of the most dangerous ayat, and pay attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا وَرَبِّكْ This is Surah An-Nisa. Nay by your Lord, O Muhammad. La yu'minun. You're not going to become a true believer. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُ Until they take you, O Muhammad, as a ruler and judge in their affairs. You can't be a believer if you do not take Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tab, how do I take Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Khair, inshallah, I'll go. If I have a fight with Abdullah or an argument about something or with my wife or with uh, my in-laws or someone, khalas, I book a ticket to Medina and we go ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We sit near the grave, Ya Rasulullah, is that correct? No, no, Habibi, it's not correct. Until you take the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the Qur'an, the sharia as a judge in your affairs. Is that enough? Is that sufficient? No. Not only that. There are more conditions going to pile up on you. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَبَيْتَ Another piece in the ayah. And they do not find within themselves any dislike of what you ordained. Yani, I can't say I dislike this, even though I'm going to implement it, but I just don't like it. No, you can't say that. La ilaha illallah. Yani, I'm going to implement it, but I just don't like it. No, you can't say that. Otherwise, you're not a true believer. Because, one would ask why? Because you don't have the full conviction that Allah is the wise. Because if you have the full conviction that Allah is the wise, Al-Hakim, you will accept it. And you would know that it's best for you, even if the medicine tastes bitter. Still, it's good for you. Isn't it or not? Even if it tastes bitter. But it's good for you. Why? Because you have full faith that the doctor is right and he's got his bachelor's hanged on the wall. Isn't it? But... When it comes from the Prophet ﷺ, because of our weak attachment to the Quran and Sunnah, we start doubting. Not only that, is there a peace? Yes, there's another peace in the ayah. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And they submit with full submission. يُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا للتأكيد Came after it, تَسْلِيمًا للتأكيد To confirm the first one. And you submit with full submission. No questioning. Because it comes from the sources of guidance to mankind. Wallahi, sometimes these people who say, yani, I recorded a lecture about the reality of our Sharia. Subhanallah, and in it I reiterate a message for you. The ones who say that our Sharia, whatever they criticize it, I ask one question. The Sharia of Islam was tested for last 1400 years before the fall of the Khilafah. And it worked so beautifully and the Muslims were highly advanced. Why would not work? Today, tomorrow, and after a million years. Something already been tested for 1400 years. There's nothing on the face of this planet been tested for 1400 years like our Sharia. And they say, yet, we still, some of us have doubt about our Sharia. Anyway, we continue. So the ayah here is clear in that. And another, and I seal the lecture with this ayah, that the obedience have to be only to Allah and to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasoola wa ulil amri minkum. Us, we adhere, we say to the Qur'an and Sunnah, we say, Allah already put the manhaj for us. 
revealed the methodology for us. Obey Allah. Allah, first order. Obey Allah. Wa ati'ur Rasul, a second order separate from the first order but attached to it. Obey Allah. Ati'ur Allah, mean the Quran. Wa ati'ur Rasul, and obey the Messenger. A second order. That means follow the Quran and follow. Sure, that this lecture gone for nothing. The Sunnah. And then Allah said, Wa uli al amri minkum. And the people in authority amongst you. But he never mentioned the word Ati'u. Ati'u Allah wa Ati'u Rasul. Wa uli al amri minkum. Obey Allah, obey the Messenger, and the ones who are in authority, the ulama and the shaykh and the rulers. As long as the ulama said, they are following what Allah has ordered and the Messenger has ordered. Otherwise, they have no obedience. Because there is no word ati'u. Otherwise, if Allah wanted us to obey humans beside Muhammad Wasallam, blind following, He would have said to us, ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa ati'u uli al-amri minkum. No. He said, ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa uli al-amri minkum. Meaning, if you obey them, if they obey Allah and the Messenger, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الطَّاعَةُ فِي الْمَعْرُوفِ Indeed, the obedience in ma'roof, in goodness. And another hadith, he said, لَا طَاعَةَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ There is no obedience for the creation in the disobedience of the Creator. One minute, what we spoke about. What is the Qur'an and Sunnah? According to whom we understand the Qur'an and Sunnah? We said according to the interpretation of our righteous predecessors, the three generations. Then after that we said it is important to adhere to the Sharia of Islam so you can win the Jannah towards the end. And we said that the Quran, the Sunnah is part of the Quran and the Sunnah explains the Quran and the importance of the Sunnah as important as the Quran. And we said to achieve success, we have to adhere and follow the Qur'an and Sunnah and have tabaiyyah to the Qur'an and Sunnah. And last point is that the only obedience is to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and we should follow the Qur'an and Sunnah blindly. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anna astaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.